Meet Robin Todd, the executive director for TTEL. In this video, we'll be diving into his recent speech on the professional learning community PLC and the new curriculum in Ghana. Right now, trainings are being held across the country for the rollout of subject specific PLC, that is SSPLCs, right after the DPLCs department based ones. This session took place at the Holy Child Center in the central region where Robin Todd touched on many key points and teachers asked insightful questions, all of which he answered. But before we delve into the main video, um, here are some highlights from his speech. This is CKS News GH. One question stood out which is, would this new curriculum be abandoned if there is a change in government? Robin Todd has emphasized that whether it's the NPP or NDC or whichever government it is, this curriculum is for Ghanaians. And for the first time, it was written by Ghanaian teachers. Unlike in the past where professors who had been out of the classroom for decades um, wrote the curriculum. He also shared an example from other countries where teachers were giving salaries higher or double salary or some even 100% salary increment, but then they tried to find out whether it affected teaching and learning, but rather um, it didn't lead to better teaching or learning because the right people weren't motivated. But they are also pushing for a better conditions of service for teachers and the Ghanaian um, workers. Interestingly, he shared his personal experience. Unlike many Ghanaians who dream of working in, in the UK, he studied there but chose to return to Ghana to teach English. He was posted to village and he experienced everything that comes with teaching in such a remote location. Providing that he truly understands the challenges faced by the Ghanaian teacher. Another highlight was his discussion on textbook. Um, in some cases, textbooks were available all right in schools, but officers or administrators refused to distribute them to learners, fearing they will, they will be damaged. And it, this is a familiar struggle for many teachers. When you go for books, they'll tell you, um, when they take it, the student will, will, will spoil it. Many engaging questions were raised, including concern about teacher trainings in universities and colleges. Robin Todd confirmed that PLC sections have already begun for lecturers, equipping them with the necessary skills to train teachers who will fit into the new curriculum. There are also plans, or plans are in for workshops to train national service personnel, that is those who complete before the rollout in the universities so that they can also be fully equipped before they go to the classroom to hear more of his um <laughs> And in fact, Tito's roots are here in Cape Coast. 
the chair of detail, the board chair, is Professor Joe Samuel and the vice chair of detail, Sister Elizabeth, the former principal of Orlando College of Education. So we're an entirely Gallic organisation. Gallic is the only country where we work and we're committed to the development of Gallic. It's interesting. As I mean, sometimes we find it hard to praise ourselves. We're very good at criticising, but sometimes we find it hard to believe that there are some things that we're doing that are, are good. But I've worked with ministers of education in 11 countries across sub Saharan Africa. Uh, Tanzania, Uganda, Nigeria, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Mozambique, Malawi. And I can tell you, we have the best secondary education system in all of those countries. Best quality teachers, best facilities in those countries. But there is something that is holding us back in the CLS, but so we know what it is. It's chewing and pouring and passing and forgetting, isn't it? And our young people have forgotten that the purpose of education is about getting skills and competencies, and instead it's about getting a waxing hat by the way of means necessary. My English teacher is, any time that I try to teach you, it's going to be in the West. And then other things. If the PhD that I'm doing at UCC, it opened my eyes to a lot of things that I wish I'd realised before. Formal education was brought together by the missionaries, by the British, by my ancestors. In fact, it's good that I'm talking in Cape Coast, because Cape Coast is one of the first places. But education in Ghana existed before colonial times. But education happened in the family, it happened in the community, and it happened in the workplace through apprenticeship. But it was the missionaries and it was the British who brought the idea of education. Everybody sitting in a room, looking at the front, saying, yes, sir. And formal education was brought to Ghana with a very specific purpose. To teach Ghanaians that European history, culture and civilization is superior to Ghanaian culture, history and civilization. And to teach Ghanaians that the English language is a superior language and let's not call them local languages, let's not demean ourselves, Ghanaian languages. And if you look at the state of Ghana today, they did a good job, didn't they? Because everybody thinks the foreign things are better than Ghanaian things. And everybody gets a chance to go outside, they'll go outside all of them. And it's because of our education system. Because when you go to age, everybody is socialised, the foreign things are better than gun things. Look at how we learn ABC. B is for ball. C is for cat. A is for what? Apple. My friend, I lived in the room for two and a half years. I didn't see a single apple. <laughs> the apple is not indigenous to the garden, is The reason we say A is for apple is because in water, apples are literally growing on trees. You walk around any town in water. And you'll see apples growing, just like we have mango and pawpaw and pineapple. But we take orange, thank you. But you can't grow apple in Ghana. The first young man that can grow apple as well is going to make a fortune. And guess what happened? Why can't we pick something that has more local resonance for us? You see a lot of ants running around. Why can't we be creative? English is a dynamic land, isn't it? Why can't we pick a, a, a word from, from our own culture? A sangha? Any sort of sangha? <laughs> so you see, a splendid, a splendid example of it. But you see what education does to us. And what we get to see, guys, is even worse, isn't it? Where are the history teachers? Any history teachers here? History. Yeah. Wait. 
The purpose of our education system is to produce honest citizens who love their country. And he explained, I can produce an engineer, I can produce a doctor, I can produce a lawyer, but if that fellow isn't honest and they don't love their country, what use are they to our national development? And that's what we've done in Canada, isn't it? You have seen the high school teachers. You have taught many people who have gone on to become lawyers, engineers, doctors. And where are they now? <laughs> Outside. Developing other people's countries rather than developing their own. Because of our curriculum. Because of that view that Ghana is inferior to foreign affairs. This new curriculum has been written by 300 Ghanaians. By senior high school teachers, for the first time ever, most of the writers of this curriculum have come from senior high schools. It's been written by you. When we've written curricula in the past, they've been written by professors who haven't been in the classroom for 30 years. And by the way, those professors, where did they get their PhD from? They get the so it's in their mind that when they come back here, they want to put the outside things back into the education system. For the first time, it's written by classroom teachers. And it's an excellent curriculum. An international panel of experts, chaired by Professor Kwame and Chapman, looked at the curriculum that you have written and said that we are only the second country in Sub-Saharan Africa to try to implement the curriculum as ambitious as it is, focusing on the value the first country to try was South Africa under Nelson Mandela after apartheid. And in South Africa, they wrote a beautiful curriculum, a wonderful curriculum. But the curriculum failed because the teachers didn't understand the curriculum. Because they forgot that teachers are the single most important part of any education system. Without the teachers, no reform. Work. And what they tried to do in South Africa was to train all of the teachers in a week. It's what we tried, isn't it, in 2019 with the basic school curriculum. You take all the teachers, you put them in a room, you give them all for a week back, and you think they're going to take them, they don't. And so that is why GES introduced PLC. So that every week the Ghanaian teacher can look at the material, can understand the pedagogy, can understand the content. You've had the teacher manual for the past four months. So by, by the time this curriculum works, like the Ghanaian teacher understands it, and we can become the first country in South Africa to successfully implement our own curriculum based on our culture, values, and 21st century skills. And do you know what? There are some members of the international community who want Ghana to fail. I'm not happy that the government has done this by ourselves. The teachers have done this by ourselves. Professor Appeal, the former Director General of NAC, was called to meet the Education Development Department. And they wanted to know how can Ghana write a new curriculum, written by teachers, how can Ghana write a new curriculum without coming to them for international technical advice and international technical assistance. And we know what they mean by international technical advice and technical assistance. Putting their own ideas, their own culture, their own values inside the curriculum that we are teaching. And we see what they do. They come with their projects and their logos and their vehicles, and they try to confuse us with small money. So we're fighting for one area and per day, and we're missing the bigger picture, which is the content of what is being put inside our own. They want us to fail. And I know it isn't going to be easy. Our classrooms are overcrowded. We lack ICT. Many teachers don't feel motivated or respected. But do you know what? They want us to be financial. They want us to be safe that we can do it. Because if we can prove that we can do it, other countries will come to us as well. So let's look at what we've done. Assessment. Why have you already written the new scheme of assessment, scheme of examination, sample of questions, and a new curriculum? Before it's even been launched to the schools, they've written it all, and it's going to an international panel on the 31st of October, Nigeria, Liberia, Gambia, Sierra Leone, so it can get the YC and
form of words. So we're going to have to be creative and resourceful. And in a situation where we don't have the power, we're going to have to try to find another way to do things. Field trips. And again, I can't give you money for field trips. But look, schools like this, old students associations, look at the money you can get, look at what you can invest. And all we want is to do the best. Everybody in this room does their best, even with the constraints. What we're going to achieve is a lot better than what we have at the moment, isn't it? So let's be positive. I was a grammar teacher prize last week. And um, by the way, you should apply for grammar teacher prize. It's, 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 it's not something, some people think it's a stick to that contest, it isn't, it's genuine. But one of the winners of grammar teacher prize said, if a teacher has a positive attitude, the learners are all positive. If the teacher has a negative attitude, the learners are all negative. And we all need to try to have that positive attitude, even inside, if we know that we have any resources. We have to be positive and we have to try. And let me just talk about motivation. Because I know that most of the high school teachers do not feel motivated. That's true. We do a survey every year, only 16% of you said that you feel motivated. So 84% of our main teachers feel demotivated. We have commissioned research with the teacher unions, NTC, GES. We've been interviewing a lot of teachers to understand why is it that you feel demotivated. Because you might say, oh, okay, it's simple. Pay is more and we'll be more motivated. And pay is part of of course it is. Because the salary that you earn now, three years ago, you could buy a lot more than you could buy now. But salary isn't the only thing, it's about respect, it's about professional development as well. So we've done that, that research, uh, it's almost finished, but we don't want to share it with the government now, because we don't think it's in time. So we're going to hold that research, January or February, whatever government is in power, we can then have a discussion with it, and we have four years until the next election to look at implementing things in that uh, research. And it isn't just about salary. In Indonesia, in 2008, they doubled their new teacher salary in the whole country. And they wanted to see what the impact was on learning outcomes. Do you know what the impact was on learning outcomes? Zero. There was no impact on learning outcomes of doubling their new teacher salary. Sounds strange, doesn't it? I said this in one school and someone told me about it to learn the teacher. But let me explain it to you, and it will make sense. Imagine Patricia is the best teacher in Indonesia. She's doing lots of teacher, levels of learning plans, extracurricular activities. She teaches in the same school. So, hopefully, I think it's always best to hope for the best and plan for the worst. If the tablets have, all of these will be loaded on the tablets. Do any of your schools have tablets at the moment? Some of you do. So all of these materials will be loaded on the tablets. And if you have to be here, can you go up? That's what the next one is. Yeah, you can have to be here for everything that goes through the videos. If the tablets don't come, then GDS will have to send guidance on how learners can use their phones or other devices. And in the worst case scenario, learners will have to print out the materials. But the good thing is the materials are written and the materials are high quality. Thank you very much.
Clarity sake. Clarity sake. Please, uh, my has to do with uh, you were trying to explain about the infrastructure deficits in our schools. And uh, I would like to know what has been put in place to achieve the same goals that you want to have. Because uh, having